Cool. All right, man. So what are we doing here? Um, what are we doing let's, here? Uh, let's, uh, episode one, I guess. Episode one. <laughs> what? My, the five zero. The five zero. Um, I was doing. even thinking the five zero, um, you know how we were calling it the Aloha design collective. Yeah. Maybe it's just the five zero, a design collective. And then the a could be that underlying Aloha. What are we saying? You know, what are we saying about design in Hawaii? And, yeah. uh, and we've, we've had some things to say about it already. We definitely you know? do in the hopes that I think, in the hopes that we move the needle, right? We move yeah. the community and, um, you know, I'd like to think that we're in a moment of transformation and we're helping, we could potentially help people figure out how to transform, right? Um, nice. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just jump in. My, my name is Mario. This is my, my co-host, Charlie, um, and hey, we're designers hey. from different different disciplines um, with the same heart, I think, um, in the same place. I think we're, we're, we're physically, definitely physically in the same place. So, um, and we, we have some, we've been having some really great conversations about, about that place, um, meaning Hawaii, um, also meaning design as far as like that place uh, design as a, as a, ethereal kind of place right so um i'm going to do a little intro or um interview on charlie and charlie's going to interview me a little bit just so you know who these these two bolo head guys are and bolo head <laughs> means bald in in hawaiian um yes and so or, or i don't know if it's pigeon is it pigeon or, i don't know pigeon pigeon in hawaiian oh, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know if it is it, we'll, I, we'll call it pigeon we'll leave it well, as sure pigeon. okay <laughs> so um so we're just going to dive in. Uh, this is the five zero. Uh, that's what we're calling this little thing. And it's just a discussion on design. Um, and we're going to be having some amazing guests come flow through here. And we're going to talk about design, how to get better. And we're going to give some actionable steps, hopefully, um, how to elevate the creative uh, wherever you are. Uh, we just happen to be in, in paradise. Uh, we happen to be in Hawaii. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so Charlie, um, Give us a little bit of background. Where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? Um, for the locals, you know, what high school you go to. And, um, <laughs> and then, um, you know, tell us a little bit about your, your career and what, you, what brought you back. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. It's, you're, you're asking me to stretch, uh, stretch real far there. Um, so, yeah, um, I grew up here in Hawaii. So I'm, a, I'm a Navy brand. My dad was a Navy. I was born in the Philippines. So, Filipino American was naturalized and did the whole thing here in the, in the state of Hawaii. Um, but yeah, Navy brat bounced between, luckily my, my dad was able to just keep it between, um, uh, keep his, uh, duties between San Diego and Hawaii. So, you know, I guess that probably explains my love for the water or being near water. Um, yeah, so grew up, went to Pearl City High School, um, love to draw all my life. I think, um, you know, I'm an 80s child, uh, where Transformers and Saturday morning cartoons or after school cartoons were really influential in kind of my, um, um, in terms of what molded me as an artist or, and ultimately a designer earlier on. Um, and just, you know, was a avid problem solver. My dad in, was in the Navy. He was a machinist mate and he loved to solve problems. So I was always observing what, how he would fix cars and, you know, just be the handyman around the house growing up. Um, yeah. And it, that kind of influenced me to just go into, um, architecture ish, you know, some thoughts around architecture, some interests around architecture, thoughts around be, seeing what I could do to pursue that dream somehow. Um, and it wasn't until, I was taking some drafting courses at Honolulu Community College that I, 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 through a career fair, I met a representative from the Artist Institute of Seattle and, and that kind of just sparked my interest in terms of industrial design. Um, knowing that, you know, through my, through looking around, like things from toys to appliances had to be designed, just never knew where and how that manifests itself into a profession that I would ultimately be, um, get into. Um, so yeah, took the steps and just um, after graduating uh, and then, you know, taking some courses of, in drafting, packed my bags and um, left for Seattle. Uh, and, you know, got my degree in ID there. And then my first job out of school was um, actually back up a little bit. It went from my interest in architecture 
slowly kind of man, uh, transformed itself into an interest in cars and knowing, you know, I, I was like, I love cars, who doesn't, Hot Wheels and what such. Um, and I wanted to actually go and continue to become a tra transportation designer at Art Center. Um, and it just so happened at the same time I was putting together my portfolio and filling out that application, um, Nike came knocking at the door. And that's kind of how I got my start in, in, the, in the industry, let alone the footwear industry. And I've always been a sneakerhead even before sneakerheads kind of is a, is a term now. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, wore Nikes, rock Nikes growing up. I was, you know, kind of, you know, growing up in Hawaii, you picture these kids, you know, a lot of kids, you know, wore flip flops to school slippers. Um, I was always wearing socks and shoes, you know, and just rocking my Nikes. And, um, and so that's another story, but yeah. So I was like, who wouldn't want to go work for a brand like Nike? And so the recruiter helped me out. We, we got an interview in and that kind of set my career off. I was super stoked. Um, flew they you know i remember them flying me down to, to to beaverton oregon and now beaverton is synonymous to 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 the sneakerhead world back then it was like where <laughs> you know um and yeah it started I, and frankly enough i didn't even start as a designer i start what they call it as a model maker and um you know i again one of those passions growing up was m building models you know from toy rockets to plastic cars and um you know plastic planes and so Basically, I was asked to come into Nike and hired on as a as a model model designer. Where you know, much like the car industry, how they would sculpt prototypes out of clay, <clears throat> I basically did that with shoes. So I worked in mo uh, various mediums and then um, did that for a few years. It was great. Got to know the team and then became a designer, a full fledged footwear designer. And then at the same time, you know, just still learning the craft. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so there was a lot of stuff that I, you know, at a place like Nike, you could learn from, you know, learn in terms of skills and human interaction um, to even just like at the very basis, just practicing and, and learning various ways of approaching design problems. And that's, that's kind of what basically um, started my sort of design thinking and design process was at a place um, where, you know, um, design thrived. Um, Fast forward, uh, so I was there for like, yeah, fast forward like 14 years. I was at, at the swoosh for like 14 years. Um, I went freelance, left, left Nike, went freelance. And, went, and that, that's where I kind of got my foot into the, into the outdoor industry. Uh, one of my clients then was uh, a brand called Gerber Blades. With, they, they make pocket knives. So um, I was able to design some hard, good products for them. And um, you know, start working with brands, um, primarily in the footwear industry as well. Um, you know, like Patagonia, um, you know, Wolverine, you name it. Um, so it was at that, at that time, Portland was thriving, um, becoming that footwear capital of the world. So it was, I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was, um, it was resourceful, um, for myself to, to keep picking up projects that centered around my specialties. Um, and then let alone, you know, get my foot into the outdoor door outdoor realm and then um what else after that it was just uh went back in-house um you know to actually gerber actually come asked me to come in-house so i became their design manager there um and that was fun so i got to you know hire and handpick um my design team and we worked you know in conjunction with with marketing brand um, PMs, um, uh, and engineers, um, uh, you know, side by side, and we were able to create some cool products, um, in that hard goods outdoor space. Um, and in 2015, I believe, uh, uh, one of my ex colleagues at Nike asked me if I was interested in joining the North base. And that's, you know, um, it was a great opportunity at that time for us to relocate. Um, my kids were young enough. Um, they were born in Ray, they were born in my, both my kids are, were born in Oregon and, you know, we wanted to get back to sunshine and we always had this like ultimate goal of just getting to back to home somehow. And, and, you know, but more importantly, it wasn't, it wasn't so much that we were growing tired, 
of 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 the of the rain and the weather in in the northwest so we we love it in hindsight we you know looking back it was actually an awesome experience but we wanted to get back to more sunshine and more family and fr- be around more family and friends and the bay offered that so along with the opportunity along with that the opportunity presented itself we moved down to the bay uh, designed footwear for um, the north face um, and up until last year and i um the company moved, uh, relocated um, to another state. Um, I cho- I opted out and decided to place more emphasis on, um, you know, my career as a freelance designer, as well as uh, getting back home to Hawaii. And as of July last year, I made the move back, um, and uh, we're now living in paradise, like Mario mentioned. So yeah, it was a it's been a it's, it's been a long career for me, but nonetheless um, fulfilling, and um, you know, it's allowed me to you know, take the observations and the experience I've learned and now be in a position to, to share it. So give me a, um, you didn't really mention any years, but I wanted to, I wanted to actually yeah. know like when, what year was it that you actually started with, uh, with the uh, Nike? Uh, that was 1996. Dang. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So 96. Um, and you know, it was the time where, um, no brand Jordan yet, yeah. no Tiger Woods. Um, it was just basketball was killing it, you know, as you know, the nineties were, that was, that was, was, that's what every, every kid was rocking, let alone playing in, um, you know, fab five, Michigan, all that. Right. I was there for, you know, coming into the, into the brand, um, and seeing all of that kind of come to fruition was, um, you know, was, was, um, was cool. I mean, just to, be blunt it's just it was just awesome to just see all that kind of stuff emerge and and now you know there wasn't any social media there wasn't anything to really document it and um and everything just lives here and here in my heart right you know and that's that's what's nice about that, that when i look back on my career it's like you know it's not about flipping through posts it's about recollecting sitting down have a drink and just reminiscing you know so yeah it was a it's a bit it was a transformational time for nike because they were on the upswing and it was just the adi and nike going at it right um those two brands so yeah that was around mid 96 um that's interesting i didn't realize that we we started our careers pretty much the same time um so uh just in general, like, what do you, what do you feel like is, um, is like the major thing about design that, that drives you? Like you, you love design, obviously. So what is it that, that still kind of is that, that sweet spot, sweet spot with you and your, your heart? I think, you know, for as much as design can and the design process and that that experience can be quote unquote routine. I think it's, it's, and I've, you know, I've kind of, it's taken me this time to appreciate this. I think it's the un- unpredictability of it all. You know, I like, I would, I would have never thought that my design career would, would, you know, would bring me here meeting a person like you and having a podcast. Right. And I think that's, um, that's something, there's something you said about designers that can actually, um, you know, not so much curate their, their career, but like make decisions and and you know and have it turn out totally unexpected you know um like i would never have dreamed that i would have had this conversation or let alone this experience out leading up to this point um meeting the people that i did so i think the unpredictability is what keeps me going now is that like you know especially in this in this state of where we're at um globally um you know it's it's making me it's forcing me and a lot of people a lot of designers to think well not more creatively and I think that's, that's where, you know, when you, if you ha, ha, going through all the things that I went through, it was always, yeah, I want to be there. I have a feeling that it'll, it'll make sense at some point, but it, it was always about, always about, okay, how do I get there? What's the journey looking like? Right. And how do I help inform that <clears throat> and take things as it come, comes my way? And maybe that's just a free nature of myself, but I've always just tried to take things and live in the moment and solve the problems that I need to solve to get me to the next step. And hopefully make a lot of friends along the way, you know, and, and, and enjoy life. I love that. Love Unpre- that. Unpre- the unpredictability. That's, that's always been the, uh, like, you know, what's next. Okay. How, what, how do you, 
how do you zig and you zag? How do you yeah. make the best right of the situation? So okay, so being being that you've designed for some pretty major brands, I mean Nike, North Face, Gerber, these are all like these aren't small these aren't small companies, right? Um, what is it about being back home in Hawaii that you feel is is kind of different about the the community? Like you've been in you've been in Oregon, you've lived in NorCal, right? Yeah. Um, you've kind of experienced the design West communities, Coast. <laughs> West Coast design communities. Yeah. yeah. Um, so coming back to the, the westernmost coast, right? It's like, um, what do you feel is, is, is different here as far as like the design community, creative community you pick? I, I think, you know, as it relates to industrial design, the profession that, you know, I'm in, I think it's, um, the amount of exposure or the, or the least amount of exposure, I guess, here in the islands, um, you know, and I've always owned that. I've always, each, each year I'd come, each time I'd come back and visit home, um, I'd always like check the waters, test the waters, see if like, okay, where, where, where's, where's Hawaii at in terms of design and, and let alone product design, industrial design and could, is it thriving here? What's the level and what is, is, is there something here? Right. And could it be potentially, could it thrive here? Um, I think there's that, that was the biggest observation, obviously, you know, I need to, um, I want to further my career and, and evolve my profession and in a place like Hawaii, you want to see if that's feasible. Um, and then another piece is just, um, the, how would you call the, the behavior, the, I, you know, after working at these brands, you become groomed in this corporate way of life, right? And working in teams and, um, you know, we don't have much, you know, we don't have the giants in terms of, you know, consumer goods here. You know, you think about brands uh, here in the islands that are situated and homegrown, so to speak. Uh, a lot of it centers around, you know, travel and entertainment and art and media but when it comes down to like consumer goods there's um there's not the big there aren't any big giants out here um off the top of my head and it which is nice because you know i would imagine like if portland was an island um you know what that would how would that would um you know how would that influence create uh, creatives in a place that really you can drive around in like three hours or less than that. Right. Um, and how would that do with the te local talent pool, let alone, um, you know, the, the consumerism around here. Um, so, so having, you know, having come from that and coming back here, it's a different industry or different industries. Um, but pro being, being the product design world, it's, it's, um, it's been, it's been challenging. There's a few brands out there where I can like, actually take my talents to and say, Hey, what do you guys think? And are you, are, are you ready? You know, are there things that you want to start expanding upon in terms of consumer goods? Um, and then last, but I think the biggest for, thing for me is just being, being, having the sense of relief of being, you know, when you go back home, when you, um, when you go to mom's house and eat her home cooking, I think that's the same thing I feel like being back home in Hawaii now is that um, it, although I've been away for all these years, 20 plus years, um, you know, I've, I've returned, you know, and gone to, gone, you know, gone to see how, how much this, this, uh, this island has evolved, the state has evolved, but, you know, breathing a sigh of relief that, Hey, you know, I'm home again, you know, and, and fortunate in that, you know, so yeah, it's been, it's kind of, you know, it's there and there are a lot of things, but those are my three main ones. And, you know, it's, it's taken some adjustment, but at the same time, um, you know, I wasn't too far away, <laughs> six hour flight, <clears throat> yeah. which isn't too bad. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I think we can, we can edit this stuff out, but, okay. um, you want to, you want to, I don't want to like. I have a bunch of questions, but I want, I'm trying to make them like more general talking points for us so that yeah. we can like talk about whatever. So, um, I'll, I'll throw it over to you and you can, you can ask me some questions. Um, 
All right. Um, so Mario, you know, we, you know, just a, just a brief background, Mario and I met um, on a virtual uh, portfolio review and we're we're going to be upcoming we're going to be working together a lot more closely in the in the future um through through other venues but for the most part um uh, he and I, I i remember you know a few conversations ago he and i just clicked and and um yeah without further ado i want to you know i want to <laughs> i want to hand it over to mario and have him kind of give him give a snapshot of his background and what he's all about uh, all right. Well, like I said, like I mentioned when you were speaking, I didn't realize that we started our careers roughly almost exactly the same time. Um, so quick, just a little background. I'm from Los Angeles, California, um, and um, grew up in, around East LA area, if you know where that is, uh, Monterey Park, Pasadena, that kind of that area of that's where I grew up. Um, kind of same thing. I was always kind of drawing and and, and doing art stuff growing up. Uh, I remember one of my earliest memories about um, my mom asking me about what I wanted to do when I grew up. It was like, I, I literally remember her saying, or remember myself saying I was coloring at the time. And I was like, you know what, if I could color for a, for a job, that would be it. I, I would love to do that. Um, and so um, obviously after, after high school, I went to engineering, um, which doesn't make any sense at all. So um, I went to a technical high school, uh, Don Bosco Tech. Um, I thought I was, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I really, I've told this story once or twice, but like, um, I, the only reason I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted a Porsche and that's how I figured those are the only people that I saw driving Porsches. So I wanted to get that. Um, and so out of high school, I went to UCLA for a year to study mechanical engineering. I was going to, to be a corporate lawyer uh, with an engineering background. Um, after second quarter of UCLA, I realized I don't care about physics in the sense of I don't want it to make, I don't want to make it my life's work. Um, I was decent at, at uh, calculus and um, biology and chemistry. I was okay, but um, I just wasn't, I just wasn't feeling physics and I wasn't learning it as, as I, as I needed to, to be a mechanical engineer. Um, and then roughly around that time, my friend, a friend of mine who, uh, still a really good friend of mine today, uh, he told me he was moving to San Francisco to go to art Academy. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute, what, there's a, there's a, there's a whole college to go to so that you can, you can do art. Like that doesn't make any sense. You can get, a, you can study art and get a degree in that. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go to graphic design school and up there. And, um, I was like, all right. And I was like, is there, is there anything out, down here? Like in Southern California? And he's like, yeah, it's art center, but he's like, but it's super expensive. And, um, like I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to wait to get in. And so I immediately looked it up, um, in the phone book cause there was no internet. This is 1992, 93. Um, and uh, <laughs> so I find them, I call them, I ask for them to mail me a brochure. You remember those things like full on school brochures about that thick. It smelled like printing press. It was like the most gorgeous, beautiful, it had like silver print, like silver ink on it. Like I cherished that thing. Um, I, in fact, I think I had it up until like maybe five years ago or 10 years ago when I moved out here, but um, it was just gorgeous. And so like, I, I would, I would look through that thing every day. I would just look through it and look through it. Um, and kind of as Charlie had mentioned, they're, they're kind of known for um, a, f a few things very, very largely at that time. They were very much known for their graphic design program and their uh, industrial design program, their cars. Um, they were, at one point called like the Yale of car design, because it was just, that's where you want, well, that's where you went to go to, to be a car designer. Um, I asked my dad to, to send, to, to take me over there. Cause it, it was literally like maybe t half an hour from my parents' house. I was living in, um, in, uh, the dorms at UCLA at the time. So he picked me up. We visited on a weekend. Um, and literally, as soon as I saw the building, I was like, I need to come here. So this is a big black steel building, nothing, nothing special about it. Just, it was just this ominous steel structure. Um, 
And once you walk in, all you smell is like solvent and, and, uh, what else you, you smell like the the uh, resin and solvent and ink and it just you get in and like if 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 this is like for you then it was like crack cocaine like you smelled it and you're just like i need to come to school here um so i finished my time at ucla i told my parents i'm like i'm like i want to go to art center um so they're like well we're not paying for you to just get your ge's at at uh, ucla so i Stopped going to UCLA. I spent a year going to night classes at Art Center to get my, my portfolio ready. Um, got in. I, I actually got in, took a couple classes. I took an industrial design class and I took a graphic design class because I actually wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, and my, my graphic design teacher was a little bit cooler than my industrial design teacher or I would have been an industrial designer. Um, in fact, I, I really wish many times that I was actually an industrial designer because there's so many things that I, I've wanted to make over the years, but ended up going to graphic design, got in, um, and went for, you know, about a year and a half. It's a, it's a full, like they have three terms a year. So, you know, you graduate in eight terms. So it takes about three, three and three quarters years to, to graduate. And so I went, I went for almost half the time. And then my friend who, the one that I was speaking about that had gone to art Academy of art. Uh, he calls me up. He's like, Hey man, I'm, I'm working for Disney. Uh, we need some freelancers. Can you come, can you come help? Can you, can you come interview and, and help? Do you know how to do this, this, and this? And I was like, yeah, I, that's easy. Um, it was like, it was like, uh, illustrator and, and, and Photoshop. I was like, yeah, I've, I've been taking, I've taken like 10 classes at that already. I was like, I'm, I'm, you, you know, I can do it. And so, um, he gets me in there and one month later, what turned into like 10 to 15 hours a week turned into like 40 plus hours a week. Um, and I, I was like, I walked away from our center. I was like, I'm not going to pay at that time. It was like $45,000 a year to go to school and, you know, make, make 80 here or, or make 80 here. Like, what do I, what am I doing? And so I just walked away from, from art center, uh, for a time. And worked for Disney. I worked for Disney for two years. I saw a Disney balloon from around maybe maybe about 200 people to like 2,000 people in, the, in those two years. I worked for Disney.com. And uh, I did, you know, this is, this is back in the day where, um, you know, GIF animations were the first thing. That was like the first, that was like major technology. Now it's like fun. It's like, oh, cool, meme, memes and all this stuff. It's like, this is like when it was invented. Um, this, is, this is during the time where JPEG technology was invented. Okay, so this is, this is, how, long, this is how old I am. And, uh, and so we, uh, you know, we, we learned a lot of really cool technology. We started using some really cool technology at the time. I was really, really very, very world-class advanced stuff. Um, and I just started learning everything and anything I could, 3D, um, HTML, you know, print, like print, anything, anything I could do to express design, um, I learned. And because of that time that everybody wanted, you know, people to do web stuff or internet stuff. People didn't know how to do a lot of that stuff that I just, I did every day for like, you know, I don't know, 12 hours a day. Um, so I, after two years, I, I went freelance for a while. I started working for smaller, smaller companies here and there. Uh, but pretty much every company I worked for ended up working for Disney or Buena Vista or Warner brothers or some, some major studio um, during the course of, um, uh, my freelancing, um, I did work for an educational company at some point and those were all, that was all like ex Disney people. Like, so it was very, very, it was a very small community that, that did what I did for a while. And then, um, the, then two, then nine uh, 11 happened. Um, and everything kind of started shutting down. Um, I remember getting laid off cause of the, the company I was working for wasn't, they were, they got hit pretty hard by just like the repercussions of 9-11 and everything. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I, I need a little break. I'm going to go back to school. So I went back to art center, incurred a, a ton more debt. And, 
at that time I had already been a creative director. It was like, I had already done like big jobs. And, and so I was going to just more to, to talk to, you know, talk to my instructors, build relationships with them, basically using it as my own marketing and networking tool. Um, it was a very expensive marketing and network tool. Um, and ended up graduating, started working with um, the same friend that had uh, brought me into Disney. We started working on a, he had a small studio that we all worked for. And we had a company that hired us out of there. Um, and we started doing some really cool subversive advertising campaigns that were just kind of like really weird, cool, worldwide, like strange, um, story driven stuff that, uh, some people are, are still kind of doing a little bit today. Um, but nobody was doing anything comparatively, um, to kind of like the, the scope of what we were doing. Um, it was all just very, very, very undercover, very, uh, guerrilla esque, um, story driven, uh, ad campaigns. And, uh, one of the coolest ones that we did was, uh, for the dark Knight movie that came out and it was just literally like scavenger hunts, worldwide scavenger hunts of people like in Joker makeup running around cities and stuff. It was just like crazy stuff. So it was, it was really funny. So I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot during, during that time of how to, how to tell stories, how to, how to, um, do strategy for unfolding, you know, brands and different things. Uh, and then um, the 2008 recession hit and that kind of closed down a little bit. We went from like a studio of like 23, 24 to six. And my sister and brother had already moved out to Hawaii and I would visit them every once in a while. And uh, my sister had just gotten married. I had just come back from her wedding and I was burned out. Like as far as like work, I was just burned out. I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. And I go back, this is the end of 2008, and I get laid off because things were just so bad. So um, that I was like, all right, cool. Well, maybe this is just time for me to go to Hawaii and see what's happening. Um, I was always on the lookout for like jobs and things out here, but there was really never anything. And I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. And this will segue into our conversation later, but I was, I was like, why, why isn't there any design stuff? I was like, I, I'm coming from like a really design heavy place, Los Angeles. And, and I was just like, why, you know, why aren't there any design jobs? Um, and so when I got out here, I realized there really isn't a design or there wasn't at that time, a very big design community. There were a couple mom and pop shops as far as like design shops. Um, but then there was at that time, I think there was three advertising agencies. There's MVMP, there was Anthology, and there was, um, I forget the other one, but I think MVMP, they kind of consolidated a couple of them. And I mean, I sent my resume everywhere, but I was, I was pretty burned out. So I wasn't even really excited about trying to do that and ended up working for a church for a while, like doing mentoring and, and uh, discipleship and teaching the Bible for a good amount of years. Um, and slowly design kind of start, started creeping up into, into my life again. I started doing CrossFit, started branding all these CrossFit gyms, and um, I started a couple brands out here, which is really, really fun. Um, and now it's like, you know, 2020, I've been out of here for 11 plus years and I can't even imagine, I can't believe it. It was like, it's crazy. Like it's, 2009 to 2020 just like disappeared. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's where I am. I'm, I'm here. I do brand strategy. I'm still working with some amazing brands here locally and on the mainland. Um, but doing, doing it in a different way, I'm, I'm kind of having different conversations with, with owners and kind of helping them strategize as far as like what they want to do with their brand and, and how they can talk to, um, their communities a little bit better, a little bit more focused. Um, so that's, that's me. I mean, that's pretty much, that's me up to now. That's, that's it. So I've worked for a lot of entertainment agencies. I've been a pastor and a, and a, a youth leader, a young adult leader, and now I'm a dad and, and an entrepreneur. So that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's been a crazy journey. It, um, you LA folks, man. I, <laughs> what does that mean? Does no, that mean? it's just um, you know, yeah, just hearing about your background, and it's it's just kind of 
everyone that, because I have close family, cousins, um, even my best friend still resides in, in Pasadena. And they say the same thing about like, you know, their experiences. A lot, LA has a lot to offer. Um, but man, it can, it can really, you know, take a toll at times. And it oh, sounds yeah. like fortunately for you, um, you've had those opportunities in place that have kind of allowed you to go from one opportunity to another, uh, which is awesome. And, and despite the whole downturn of the economy, um, you're still able to, to make lemonade out of lemons. Right. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but at, at the same, yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, but the, for me, it's like that, that notion, like that whole piece, that family piece of your sister getting married and that, that, that break, that pause that just made you think like, Hey, is this something that, you know, is there, you know, subliminally, is there something here? Right. And, and yeah. going back to, going back to LA and realizing and getting laid off, that's, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing to experience. And, and just a side note, one of the, re the reason why I left Nike to go freelance was because of that it was a downturn of the economy in 2008. I was laid off in 2009. And the difference between me and many of the people that were leaving there with their head down was like, I went, I left with my, <laughs> I kind of rushed out the door. <laughs> like, I was like, ya. you know, you know, this is the push I needed. Right. And I think, um, there was a, there was a few months where I had to heal, you know, no doubt yeah. because that, that Monday afterwards was like, I now don't have a routine yeah, <laughs> and, and that's terrifying. And, and which brings, brings me to another question, like, what was your level? Like, how terrified were you? Were you, how scared were you? Like, how fearful are you um, in this industry we're at? Especially as a freelance, like, you know, a lot of times you have to go hat in hand and, yeah. you know, ask, looking, seeking work. Um, you know, like, and how have you managed that fear? Like, just in general? Yeah. Um, well, first, first, I just want to mention, like, we actually pitched at Nike um, during the time that I was there. Yeah. So like you were, you were there, you were, you were in Beaverton. I, we, we pitched Nike and it was when, uh, Kobe's, they were launching Kobe's new shoe. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we were going to do some cool, like subversive thing, all that stuff. Right. I think it was probably right before you left too, because I think it was like in that 2007, 2008 year timeline. Um, so it's funny that we, we just, oh, we actually, I was actually in Nike basketball. That was cause that was like my last gig there yeah. um, in Nike basketball. So I, I totally, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're working with other people, but I was probably same. Yeah, we, had, we, we, had a meet, <laughs> we had a meeting in the building we, you know, we went world. and uh, we were on the campus and everything. And um, so, yeah, we, we, I just remember pitching that and, and um, them telling us kind of like what they wanted to do and stuff like that. But, uh, that aside, as far as like, uh, fear and managing fear, um, it's, I think it's just been part of the DNA of my career. Um, I've always been, I've always been looking for what's next. Um, even when I was at Disney, I was always like, I was always trying to do freelance and make my freshest and newest skills work for me beyond where I was actually working, even though I was working like, like a dog, like 68 hours a week at wow. Disney. I was, it was, I mean, it was a full on startup. It was like Disney.com was like in full on startup mode. And so we were, we were working like crazy. Um, and during that time, because I was so specialized and there's certain, certain things that I was, I was doing that, that very few people in the world were doing at the time. So I was able to like, people would know that I did it. So like my kind of network of people knew other people in, in different places. And so like everybody would kind of come back up to me and say, Hey, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And I was, so I was doing like freelance on the side. Um, and so that mentality of like knowing that I kind of have to constantly hustle if I want more. Um, so leaving, leaving Disney, I literally stepped into another situation and another situation. I was literally just hopping from another situation, one situation to the next. And, um, and that's just the way it was because the skill set I had at the time was just so specialized. People wanted that skill set. And so I was just like, I was just 
jumping from, from ship to ship because people are just inviting me into different places. Um, but you know, there's, there's, there are times where, where it got kind of scary. Like, um, uh, when nine 11 happened, I think I was, I was so like at peace with like walking away from, from doing design at the time, because I just wanted a, I wanted a break to do, to finish what I had started. First of all, that was, that was the whole thing is to go back and just finish my degree. Um, but also just, just a break from the kind of the rat race for a while. Cause it, it kind of affected me pretty deeply. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna step away. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of regroup. I'm going to finish my degree. And then I think I, I coached water polo during that time for four years, went to school, coached water polo and, and I was cool. And then, and then we, then I stepped back into like nonstop. That was the last job that I had. We stepped up, I stepped back into like 200 miles an hour design pitching, like, there was a, there was a job that we had that we were pitching for Google and we didn't leave. We didn't really leave there. There was five of us at that time. We didn't leave the office for two weeks. Like we were just, we were sleeping there. We we were just like, our machines were like over. It was just crazy. Everything was overheating. It was just like, and we were just like constantly going. I think I, I would go home to shower and then like take a nap and come back. Like, that's how much work we had. And we were just trying to do this pitch. Um, and that, that's a funny story in the, uh, you know, at the end of it, but it was just, that was the, that was the time, you know? So it was like, there wasn't, it wasn't that it, it wasn't scary to like not have anything. I just knew that all I had to do was like reach out to a few people and somebody would get me in contact with somebody who needed something. And that's just, I, I just, I've been really blessed to to have that kind of network this whole time. So no, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you know, I think it takes a lot of courage to to you know go through that and then realize and then make that change, make that shift, right? Um I'm kind of I was in a similar boat. It was, you know, a lot of stressful events leading up to right before I arrived here in the islands and you know, but there was always this inkling in the back of my head that I knew that it was, it was just going to get better. Yeah. It had to get better. It had to get better. And, you know, I just had to really focus on what mattered most to me at this point in time in my life. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't about, you know, designing another product. It was about just centering myself, being the father that, that I always dreamed of being to my kids, um, being the, being the husband. And then, not so much having design be the take the back seat, but just putting a pause on that so I can kind of just regroup and then refocus. And it's been what? It's been a year now, actually. Exactly a year today um, <laughs> that I actually landed landed, landed on Oahu and began that healing myself. And um, and yeah, it's it can be, and that's one of the reasons why I asked. It's just, it's always like hearing the hearing seeing experiencing fear not fear like you know horror movie but just that like uncertainty facing that uncertainty at times you know from economic uh, downturns to pandemics now it's like we are we're all experiencing the same things and as creatives um I, i'm always curious to see how people have dealt with that over the years and how they've managed it to the point where you know for the people that succeed and and for John and being a designer, being a creative and um, ha- while having a family and, you know, being a situ- in situations such as we're in as freelancers, um, consultants, um, it's, I'm always, it's always nice to, to, to hear those stories. And for the people that don't, it's like, I want to, you know, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear people's experiences that, you know, cause I've, I've met, I've, I've known people that have taken, you know, make total, you know, 180 career shifts and, you know, have gone into something new and, you know, kind of evolved in, I guess, adapt, adapted, um, in, in, in their circumstances. And, and that's always good to hear as well. Um, but no, it's, uh, sounds like you've had this, uh, this awesome career in terms of having, you know, opportunities kind of being presented to you. Um, I, 
it's just so interesting how our lives have paralleled, you know, uh, up until this point. And like, literally, like you were probably in the next building and I was sitting at my desk working, you know, while you were, you were creating your pitch and or doing your pitch. Um, to even just yeah. like the, the, our, you know, our, our, our similarities in age and, and where we're at now with family and our career. Um, two ball ahead guys, you know, <laughs> into design um, here in, uh, in Hawaii. Um, the big difference now is that, you know, you've been here 12 years and I'm, I'm in a sense that mainland guy that's here trying to, you know, get, uh, get back to my roots and, yeah. and, and uh, begin living life here in the how, islands. How, how has it been in the last like year? Like, and we've had some conversation, which is funny because you're, you're from here technically, and, <laughs> but, but I'm from here now, basically I'm, I'm currently yeah. from here and yeah. I've been here for the last decade, which blows my mind. Um, you've asked me about the local design community and stuff, which is funny, but like, how have, how have you kind of, uh, what's been your experience since you've been back as far as the design community and what's, what has been your view about that? Um, it's been more family focus. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there was a point where up until I, I landed last year, um, my wife and kids, we were living um, apart from one another for almost about a year. Um, as, as I started closing, closing down, wrapping things up in the Bay, um, as a, as a company I was, um, with, was making the transition to move to Denver. And, um, so there was, it was a, there was a lot going on emotionally as well as physically in terms of us being apart, which made it challenging at times to manage. But, um, fortunately it was, um, you know, um, I was able to, you know, visit once a month and, you know, be, a, you know, thank God for FaceTime. Um, you know, so there was a lot of stuff that we could supplement that experience with, but nothing beats, you know, you know, having those nightly hugs, tucking your kids in, in bed. So a lot of when I first arrived back, you know, was, was just getting back to that routine, you know, having, you know, having my kids realize that I'm here now, um, I'm not going anywhere. And, you know, I can read them stories or we can just chill, hang, watch a movie now. Um, being that family unit that we were um, before and and same thing with my wife. So, and then on top of that, it was just getting reacquainted with um, my siblings. I have a younger brother and younger sister. So I'm the oldest of three. Um, and my, my parents, uh, you know, every year was this, you know, we, you know, there were times where Actually, there was never, I don't think there was, I can remember a time where we celebrated birthdays and, and Father's Day, Mother's Day, uh, let alone just hanging out, you know, on a whim since I've moved, since I left. And so, you know, it was this, hey, dad, you could call me anytime now. I'm, I'm here. Like, let's hang, right? Let's, let's, you know, just having that spontaneous, hey, we want to meet up for breakfast, right? Like that, those are things that were that was foreign to me because I've never been able to do that because we lived in the mainland. And, and so it was getting back to a lot of that thing, just that figuring out or making myself accessible and, and realizing, you know, having, having my family members realize that, Hey, yeah, you know, we can get together anytime. And so I made it a priority to do that. And really I didn't touch, I didn't even put pen to paper on anything. Um, there was a small project that I was doing on this, you know, a freelance project. Um, but that was it. Just one client, really small project. And that was, that was my bandwidth, which I, I, um, I wanted, right. I, I didn't want like to come here and have this crazy list of, uh, clients that I had to do all this work for. Um, and so I did that. And then the new year I was just like, okay, maybe start turning things back online, you know? Um, so updated my LinkedIn, did all of that. Maybe start creating, um, thinking about my website, um, you know, and on top of that, I was just unpacking stuff too. So there was like, Oh, I remember this project, <laughs> you know, so I, have, I still have boxes still to uh, unpack, but it was just going through old projects and seeing what, like, it wasn't so much like what I could put in my portfolio on my website. It was just more, or, or, you know, how I could create marketing collateral for myself. It was more like revisiting, reminiscing, like I was saying earlier and seeing like taking away those nuggets that made those projects special. Right. Like, what was it about these projects? Well, how, what, who was I as a designer at this point in time? Cause I, you know, I, I still have projects, um, 
you know, in, in manila folder or envelopes uh, from my Nike days. And, you know, so it was, you know, a lot to purge, but at the same time, it, it, it was me reconnecting to my journey as a designer. And so up until now, it, um, it's been a lot of networking, um, which, um, you know, I kind of just started doing at the beginning of the year, um, getting to know the, the scenery here. Um, you know, cause it was that harsh reality that I was not the local kid anymore. Right. And I remember we were at a pumpkin patch last October in Y Manalo. And I remember this guy, I was talking to this guy and, and he was like, yeah, I've, you know, I've been living here for 16 years, much like you moved from, he was in the military, moved to the islands. And, um, when he got out, he stayed, stayed in Oahu on Oahu and been living here 16 years. And and to see like that interaction he had with the locals there, you know, like he was, I was like, man, I, I don't even like, when you hear me talk to somebody else here, I come across as that, like that, that non-local, right? Like a lot of times I, there's this assumption that I'm from the, I'm from California with the way I talk, let alone, you know, how I behave at times, I guess. So again, it's, it's been a lot of those kind of, um, self-awareness observations on my part as well as like getting back to like um family more family um um you know deepening those family connections again um my wife's side same thing as well and just yeah kind of reintegrating myself into this whole uh aloha lifestyle which is I'll be honest, it's been tough because it's, it's, you know, like coming, coming from the industries that we've been part of, it's, it's, it's a lot of it's run and gun. It's about, you know, staying on top of your game and, and, you know, um, you know, keeping your skills updated, right. And equipping, being well equipped with those to, to forge ahead to from next, from one opportunity to next Here, It's been like, you know, I, I've been able to like really get back to a lot of my craft and, and even learn a few more new things now, right? So, so hopefully this will just you know help me evolve as I you know transition back to island lifestyle. <laughs> and that was that was uh, yeah. gonna be, that was going to be my a question. Year. It was like, has it have you have you yet like slowed down into like Hawaiian time kind of like local like feel again? <laughs> you know, like I've I've spent like the last 11 years here coming from LA. Yeah. I did a full like 180 and I like landed and I was like, I'm all about Hawaiian time for now. And then slowly I've kind of like come back out of that into some kind of, um, median between the very, very chill Aloha vibe and LA craziness, you know, like, so have you, have you, have you found yourself like calming, coming down to that point yet? Well, uh, put it this way. I haven't worn, I haven't worn, I haven't worn pants for the (laughs) past six months. And (laughs) let alone, I mean, I think, I think that I put on shoes for the first time last, uh, last weekend and I was just like, Oh my God, you know? And so, so from a, a physical aspect, I think I have, you know, I, I, uh, I've definitely, I definitely feel like the fact that I can just wear shorts and shirt a t-shirt and and flip-flop or sl- slippers um you know i've i've integrated into this lifestyle in that manner but in terms of like mentality um you know still keeping connected with the with ex-colleagues friends um in the mainland um a lot of my networks up there um you know so that that ke- kind of you know keeps me connected with those time zones to, to my dismay at times, you know, in terms of like the time differences, but for the most part, you know, mental wise, I've always been just this on the go, like never stop thinking. I think all creatives have that in them, right. And that you never stop thinking about things, but it does, but the pace in which I execute that now. And, and, and luckily I'm, you know, being a freelancer, I can manage my own time, um, helps with that. Um, I'm not in that rat race anymore, which it's, which I I feel blessed, you know, and, and I have that ability to manage my time in that manner. But yeah, it's, um, you know, one year, like like I said, and I, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the next six months, let alone the next year. And, you know, maybe I'll be even more chill, um, um, grow, grow some dreads or something. I don't know. Um, (laughs) I want to see that. that. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's been great. And, and, 
<laughs> yeah. So when I, when I see, when I'm, you know, meeting you, Mario, and, and seeing, you know, how you've kind of transitioned from that LA um, resident designer creative in that industry. And, and I almost see that like, okay, I'm the future Mario in this case, you know, if we're, <laughs> if we're kind of been in this parallel path of similarities, I, I feel like, you know, I looking at you, you know, and how you've kind of, um, you know, you've made that transition from mainland life to now local island life and the network, you know, um, and hearing about the network of, of, uh, that you've built for yourself here. I, I, I feel like I'm on that same trajectory if I, if I keep doing what I'm doing. I, I think it's different now too. I mean, than, than 10 years ago, it's like, um, I think there's a, there's a much, um, more, open conversation that everyone globally is happening, happening, having that everyone's having go globally. You know, it's like, um, there's more people talking all over the place and there's more of an opportunity for us to have those creative connections, you know, all over the place. Whereas before when I, when I had just gotten here, it wasn't as, you know, it wasn't as like um, easy to to just do this type of thing, you know, at any time. Um, and now I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm meeting with people like in, in Europe, you know, weekly, which is crazy to me um, having just creative conversations about like, you know, what's going on there, how things are, how things are unfolding, what their, what their path is creatively, like how we can even work together. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's there's a you're definitely gonna have like a, a much smoother and quicker transition than than I actually did, especially because you're you're still focused on being like, you know, definitely being in that creative community. I was like peace out for like at least two years. I was just like, I don't even wanna think about it. But it was so much like it's so much who I am. Like I was just I was just like I shut off a, a whole half of who my own person was. So, but during that time, my, my company would fly me back to LA to help them work on some stuff. So I was like going back and forth to LA, like making, you know, making decent money, working on huge projects, like, you know, like a Ford campaign or like something for Tron that came out during that time. You know, I was like, jumping into like these crazy projects and then going back. And it was literally like, I was going back in time every time I would come here. Like it was like, I would literally slow from like, you know, thousand miles an hour to zero. And it was like, Oh, and okay. Is that crazy? Like that totally that different pace. Man. The pace yeah, is crazy. And I, I, think, I think that's the perception of, uh, I mean, when I mentioned that I was moving to Hawaii, that was the first thing it was like, Oh my God. I mean, they were like, how lucky are you? Right. I mean, to go back and, and relax. And there was a moment where, yeah, I just sat back and relaxed and just chilled with my dog and on the beach and my wife while my kids were in school. Um, but knowing that, that I had to keep it idle, keep it going for, you know, it was never a complete shut off. And, and, um, I think if had, I had stayed with what was currently happening before I got here, I probably would have reached that point that you did Mario and in where I was just like completely just shut it down. Don't want anything to do with it. Um, and it did get, it did get to that point at, at many times. And, um, luckily I had, I had mentors and, and my network and family to, to, to remind me that there's a capacity that I have each of one, each of us have, and, um, they, they, they observe, they're observing it. And so luckily things came, came in a time where I was able to make that choice and make that decision to opt out and, and choose Hawaii. And so, yeah, it's, it's a con, you know, I think that's, it's that concentration, that mental wellness that, I, that kind of tends to be um, forgotten, especially when you're in the, you're working in that fast pace. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, to having, to maintaining these kind of connections. And, and like you said, like, there's opportunities for these conversations to go global, right? And, and have a global reach. And I'm, I'm excited about that. But more importantly, I'm excited about like seeing where that ripple, where those ripples can, you know, start locally here within our community. Yeah. I think that's, 
that's, I think that was kind of one of the things that we, we clicked on immediately was just um, obviously our amazing haircuts, but <laughs> also just the, the, I'm going to call it opportunity for the creative and design community locally to grow, especially now. Um, yeah. There's, there's really no reason that Hawaii should be, and we can talk about this, you know, in our next episode, but yeah. there's no reason why Hawaii should be design backward or, or design like stunted or, or late Sex. on design. Like, Stagnant. yeah, yeah. There's no reason for it really in any, in any aspect of, I think world economy. Now Hawaii can be, as much on the forefront of whatever's happening in the world um, as anywhere else. But, and I think, you know, some of what you just said was, was part of it is just like, there's, there's a mentality here that is, it's passed, it's been passed on for so long that, you know, it's not part of the DNA of the culture, um, which, you know, there's really good parts of the culture and there's really not so awesome parts. Yeah. I mean, if, if I could add to that, it, I think it's, we're at a, uh, we have an opportunity to evolve. Right. And like the common theme that's been going with this pandemic is, is the ability to transform and not, not, not to evolve in, in that you're dealing with it. It's just like, Hey, if it ain't working, throw it out. Let's, let's transform. Let's change the way we do, we're doing things. And, you know, growing up in Hawaii, uh, and even just not get, digging deeper into that from the way from where I was brought up, I mean, leading up to that point where I made that decision and had my parents' blessing to move up to the mainland, it was like tough. It was like, well, what you know, isn't is is that what is that? Is that is that like engineering? Is that like you know, like architecture? Um, why couldn't you just stay here on the island and go to UH and take courses there? You know, and and fortunately enough, my parents saw that. There was this huge, there was this larger opportunity, and that I could make a career for myself um, and learn what I need to learn around product design, industrial design up in the mainland that would take me on a journey. Um, and you know, and I thank them to this day for for uh, for giving me that opportunity. Um, but yeah, I think there's this notion that like if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Here in Hawaii, and um, and I'm I'm a guy that's always had trouble with routine you know i mean i'll do i'll you know i'll, I'll take my showers do all that stuff brush my teeth, <laughs> take care of my kids but then like i'm always constantly every month like maybe we should switch the furniture around you know um and i think that's something that's you know that's something, that's the way i kind of see hawaii is that it's been so it's comfort it's it's relaxing it's easy to kind of just fall into that notion of hey we're in the islands so everything should be at peace um, and we're a community, which is, it's all positive in the, every approach of it and a lot of it in its execution, but now it's just, okay, how, how do we, you know, I'm a competitive guy. I'm sure you're a competitive guy. You know, how do we raise the level of not so much intensity, but just like that, you know, that inner competitiveness at the very least so that we are a global source of creativity uh let alone capability so I, I see that as a huge positive opportunity for us and i think there's going to be a lot of individuals um that i would like to you know that i that we're ultimately going to meet that that sharing that same enthusiasm and i think there's something to be said about those numbers and how we can harness that and and create a, a larger i wouldn't say a larger community um but a, a larger mindset around you know growing creative opportunities here let alone design thinking and execution. So huge opportunities. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to, to kind of be home and have the ability and potentially that voice, uh, to be the mechanism for change. Yeah. I mean, I think this is going to be, this is gonna be fun as we take kind of like just, <laughs> just start this journey and, um, Absolutely. hopefully, yeah, hopefully just really raise the level of, creativity here locally um and and i think meet some people that are doing some awesome stuff as well you know that that may not be so much in the in the limelight um but 
it'd be fun to like shed some light on, on some really cool creative stuff that's happening Absolutely. in the islands. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think, uh, I think that's it for today, man. I think that we, we yeah. went pretty long today, but uh, <laughs> you know, obviously this is our, our inaugural, uh, um, our inaugural episode. Hopefully somebody's stayed till, till now. Um, <laughs> why don't you shoot out some, uh, some ways for people to connect with you? I will do the same and then we'll just wrap this thing up. Yeah. Hey, um, you can find me on my, um, my professional website, which is charlieallfarrowdesign.com. You can, um, send me a note through there. Um, find me on, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, my Instagram handle is Charlie Alfaro design and my personal site is, uh, Charlie and Alfaro. So yeah, look me up. Um, I'm on social media as well as, um, professionally on LinkedIn and my, through my website. Right on. My, my Instagram is the Mario Quesada and pretty much any other social handle is that um, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Um, I think I, I scored my, 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 just my name there is just Mario Casada. Um, and um, what else? My website is uh, I've got a million websites, but my professional website is made X maker pronounced made by maker dot com and um, yeah you can you can find me there I do brand strategy and branding and all kinds of sort of different podcasty content building <laughs> type things too so guys that the, that was uh, the five zero for today episode one in the bag um, nice, and nice, we will see nice. you we'll see you next week so all right my man see you guys aloha later. talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>